Today I'm gonna teach you how to do these seamless carousel multi-post images on Instagram that you can just swipe right and they just seem to flow together. And I'm gonna teach you two different ways of doing it, the fancy and the free way. The fancy is gonna be with Photoshop and the free way is gonna be with Canva. And with this, you're finally gonna be able to post horizontal images on Instagram, occupying the whole screen and to create some really cool collage. E aí, beleza? Welcome to this channel. I'm Henry, a Brazilian photographer and filmmaker living in Italy. And in this channel, I talk photo, video, and tech. So this video is split into three different parts. And if you want to jump to any of those, you can just check the time codes in the description below, or you can just scroll through the timeline and jump directly there. In the first one, I'm going to show you how to do it using Photoshop. We're going to create a template for up to 10 vertical images, and we're going to split it. In the second part, we're going to use Canva. It's an online tool. You just use your browser, and I'm going to teach you how to create the same template over there. And we're going to have to use one other website just to cut it up to be able to post on Instagram. And in the third part, I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how to make it impossible for people scrolling through their feed not to stop and swipe right on your images to check the rest of your carousel. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to Photoshop. Okay, so let's just create a new document here. So go to create new. And here we're gonna have to set how big is gonna be this document. So you can just put in the height, 1,350 pixels. And the width, if it's gonna be 10 different images, it's 10,800 pixels wide. And the rest, just be sure that it's configured like you see here on the screen and it's gonna be fine. Create. So now you have this huge long post like that. Come to view new guide layout and here we're going to choose how many columns we want in this case we created the 10 posts image so just type 10 in the number and leave all the rest blank as it is here on the screen click ok and not always we're going to want to use 10 different images maybe it's going to be only two or three but this is going to be the worst case scenario now one more step that i like to do is to add two more horizontal guides here so you're going to come to view new guide you're going to choose horizontal and the first one is going to be 135, I'll explain why. And the second one is 1215. So now we got this huge file here split into 10 vertical images. There are 4 by 5, so perfect. It's going to occupy the maximum space possible for Instagram. And also within each one, we have two different areas. The first one is the complete one here that you can see the 4 by 5, which is what people see when they're scrolling through their feeds. And the other one is the 1080 by 1080, which is what people see when they access your profile and they're seeing your feed properly. So this is going to help us understand if we're positioning the image in the right way for both things. All right, so let's bring our image in. And I chose this one from Manarola, Cinque Terre in Italy. Photoshop is showing me that it occupies only like a couple of vertical images, but actually it's scaling down the image so that I see it as a whole. So you can see up here that it's actually only 25% of the size. Let's put it back to 100. And now you can see that it's actually a huge image. It was actually a collage of nine different images with different exposures, a total mess. But anyway, if I want to use it in the original size, it's going to occupy around nine vertical posts. We could scale up a little bit, but I don't recommend you to scale up your images too much because the more you scale up, the worse resolution it's going to be. Okay, so now it's up to us to decide how many posts we want with this image. And what I usually do is I begin to scale down until I see all the elements in the picture that I want to show. It's never going to be a precise cut. Probably you're going to miss something on the top or on the bottom. So it's up to us to decide how many vertical posts we want to minimize the problems as much as possible. If I have four different posts, you can see that I'm not cropping too much here on the houses. Let's see three. So usually I prefer like this with a little bit more negative space. So I'm going to go with three. There's nothing crucial being cut here inside the 1080 box. So it looks fine. So let's just press enter and it's going to apply the transformation we just did to the image. And now all we gotta do is chop it up in vertical pieces. Just grab the select tool. And we're gonna have to get rid of these two horizontal guides here. You just have to drag and drop them away from the image. Now what you can do is just get up here, choose the slice tool or press C on your keyboard and just come to slices from guides. Pa, done. And now what is done is it just chopped up this image in all of these vertical guides here. So it's already cut for us. So now to export, we just come to file, export, but here there's a trick. You gotta go to save for web legacy. Now it is open, just be sure that it's in JPEG, it's maximum quality, 100. Just come to save, Manarola. Save it. And that's it. 
So now if we open it up here, we're going to be able to see that it created a folder called images and that all the slices are already here. And then you're going to see obviously that there are also the slices that are blank. And there is a way of doing it inside Photoshop not to export this one, but I just find it much easier to just export everything, just select this one, delete, and that's it. So now you can see that you have the three different portions right here, and they are ready to be posted. So now two extra tips for you in case your image is something like mine, in the sense that the left portion is not as interesting as the rest. In my case, for example, the central part is the most interesting one. So what I would do in this case is I would have a composition just for the central part, which would be my first image on the post, and then I would get this collage here, these three images, and then post them in the sequence. So people could see just the main part of my image. And then when they swipe right, they can actually see the whole image much bigger. Or one other trick, if the most interesting part of your image is on the right and the crop you're doing here already looks pretty cool, you can flip it around. Just flip it horizontally. You can just right click and go flip horizontal and you're good to go. Okay, so now in this part, we're gonna do more or less the same that we did in the first part, but using Canva.com. In this website, you can create many different designs, layouts, and they have templates for all kinds of social media. But in our case, we're gonna create something from zero. So just come up here to create a design, and we are going to enter the custom dimensions that we want. But here we have a limitation in which we can only have a 8,000 pixels wide Canva. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use 7,560 as the width, because this is going to allow us to have seven different posts and the height is going to be 1,350 as usual. So you can just create a new design and now you're going to come up here to File, Show Rulers, File, Show Guides. And now you're going to be able to see up here and on the side, these rulers, and we are going to have to add them manually. So you have to come here to the left and you have to drag a line over. So I'm just going to drag them without really paying attention to where they are landing but more or less dividing this into the seven pieces. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And without zooming in, it's going to be very difficult for you to nail where should each one go. And you can just open a calculator and type 1080 plus 1080 and just repeat it until you get 7560. And now you know all of the positions in which these rulers have to fall on. So obviously the first one is gonna be 1080. So you can just slide here until you see 1080 up there. Okay, it's good. 2160, 3240. And you can also drag two horizontal lines, one at 135 and the other one at 1215. So you have the 1080 square that represents our feed and also the 1080 by 1350, which is gonna represent the picture while you're scrolling the feed properly. And once this template is done, you can just grab whatever picture you want and drag and drop it inside Canva. And it's gonna appear here inside your uploads and you just have to click it so that it's inserted on the canvas. And now you can just do exactly the same as we did before, redimension it the way you prefer. So I'm just gonna do exactly the same, position it here in the first three ones and that's all you have to do. Now, when you come here to download this file, you have to pay attention to one thing. Canva allows you, if you're using the free version, to download this image as a PNG in high quality or in JPEG, but it's gonna be a small file. So it's better to download here using the PNG file. Okay, so once downloaded, it's gonna be the same as we did before. It's gonna be the whole image with this whole lot of white space on the right. So now we gotta chop it up into seven different pieces. So we just go to easygif.com and just come to split and then to sprite sheet cutter. And here you just choose the file that you just downloaded so, and you upload it. So now you can choose how to cut it, either by tile size and you're gonna choose the width and the height, 1080, 1350. For output format, you can choose JPEG and just cut. And done. Now you just have to come up down here and just download frames as zip and that's it, it's ready. Now let me show you a couple of tricks that I use to make people swipe every time they see a carousel on my posts. So here, for example, we got one that was an informational carousel. So here, as you can see, in the main slide, we have a picture that it's cut actually in half. And this is the biggest trick to make people really go right on your images, which is leaving something, some part of an image to be seen in the next one. And what you can do is just build this up along all the carousels. And then when they see the second slide, there's something written that actually you can see that is being cut by the line here between the second and the third slide. Now, how to use it for pictures? So mainly I would use in two different situations. The first one is in which I went to one place 
and I took different pictures of more or less the same area or the same thing, different focal lenses or in different perspectives. And I want to show everything in just one post. Or the second one is if I want to show, for example, showcase a trip that I did. And then I want pictures of different places in only one post. So let's do the second example. Let's do a carousel of a trip to Italy. So the way that I would go about it is to choose a very strong first picture and then diversify in the other ones. Diversify the size, the positioning, diversify if it's, if it's gonna occupy one or more slides. So let's go for example here. Let's choose the same picture that we used before, but this would be the properly the version to do as four by five. And here I'm doing it on Canva, but we can do exactly the same thing on Photoshop. This is just about the positioning of things. So this is going to occupy the first complete slide. Now, a small trick. Actually, people sometimes they don't even realize that a post is a carousel, that they have to swipe right to see a little bit more. So what I like to do in this situation is choose a second image, like this one, for example, bring it in, and instead of leaving it only in the second slide and forward, I want to just make it pop a little bit in the first image. But just to give an idea that there's something to the right. And they're gonna see the tiny portion of the second picture and it's gonna make them curious to swipe right and see the rest. Let's grab some other one, like this one, for example. And then the way I like to do it is to just go overlapping the pictures, one on top of the other like this. And what you can do, you can just also click and then use this wheel here, just like they were properly pictures on a table. All you have to pay attention here is where you're cutting the images because sometimes it might be just in the wrong place, like for example, in this image here, in which I'm cutting exactly on top of her. And despite that people can actually hold their finger and just see the image in between, it's a little bit annoying like this. So you can also use the fact that she's looking right in this image and then just position like this so that people are gonna be seeing just until here and they're gonna be curious also to understand what is she looking at and then you have the rest of the image on the right. One other thing that you can do is to drag this image over to occupy all of the other squares and to use it as the background. So you can come up to position to back and it's gonna be there on the back. Just come to adjust, blur. I like to blur it the maximum possible and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit by clicking the transparency icon up here and just like, and like this, you kind of like have a background that matches also the color scheme of the other pictures that you're using, especially the first one, is to make it look even more that you're actually putting pictures on a table and grab one of the elements from Canva that actually look like a table. So you can come to background, but let's for example, choose this one. Okay, so now it's in the back and you can still come to adjust and you can adjust whatever you want, like contrast, saturation, or you can also blur it a little bit if you want. And then just go on and do the same. Just download this as a PNG, go to Easy GIF, or if you're in Photoshop, just export it, save it for web and do the same. Okay, now a quick tip about how to post these images properly on Instagram. And first of all, you have to send the files over from your computer to your smartphone, but please do not use WhatsApp or Messenger or anything like that because you're gonna lose the quality of your pictures. Just use something like Dropbox, Google Drive, AirDrop, or anything like that, it's gonna be okay. Now all you gotta do is go to Instagram, go to a new post, and find in the gallery the images that you just passed to your phone. And as soon as you did that, you can just come to the first image, like for example, in my case, it's gonna be this one, and then this is the very important step you have to take. So you have to click on this small icon here on the left to make it look 1080 by 1350. Now you're good to go. So the first one is selected, now you can tap the multi-post icon down here and you can just select the next ones. So now you can just go forward and you're gonna be able to already preview how is it going to be. This is the moment that you really want to check if you put them in the right order and if you haven't, you have to go back, deselect what you did until that point and then reselect them in the correct order. So as soon as you're seeing everything correct right here, it's gonna be fine. Just go forward. Now you're just gonna have the same screen to post on Instagram that you can put your description, tag people, tag it place and everything like that. All right, thanks for watching. And if this was useful somehow, please like this video. It really helps the channel and consider subscribing so that you know when I post new videos. There's already a bunch of them in the channel. And if you like this one, probably you're gonna enjoy some of the others also. So see you next time. Ciao, ciao.